Greetings, I'm at chess.com battling their chess robot set to a 1400 ELO. And if you hang with me to the end, the purpose of this video is to not play chess like checkers. I take this, my opponent takes that. It's just a constant exchange, and white usually wins because they started off first. So <laughs> they're usually the last one with a major piece or a pawn that can promote or something. But uh, I wasn't going to make this video. I was just kind of on a Sunday afternoon farting around at a 1400. And I thought, you know, this is covers some things that at the level 1400 a person should start looking for. And I couldn't see when I originally started playing chess years ago. But um, so let's get to it. So in the beginning, just try to control the center. And so develop your minor pieces. Okay, and then later in the game, you want to introduce your major pieces. That's just the basic fundamental good chess. Okay, so now I've got these pawns protected, and uh, I feel like I control the center pretty well. Um, so I played the white pieces, the computer's playing the 1400 black pieces, and... Um, it's going to make mistakes. I mean, the computer could blow me away if it wanted to, but a 1400, this is what the programmer thinks that a 1400 ELO player would play at. And uh, the computer has to make mistakes or otherwise people would never win. So here I'm doing a queen exchange, but the trade-off is now my opponent has lost the right to castle because move the king. Okay, so... And one thing I want to point out is that we now have the D file is an open file. So I should know that and have that in my mind and want to start to control the open file. Okay. And I did almost not do this. I, I, <laughs> I wanted to see how the computer would react. And I had something a little bit in mind that you're going to see here in just a second. And... Um, so let's take a look. So I'm under attack. Now, um, I was thinking, well, maybe I could, um, depending on what this king did, I mean, I knew I could come here and control this open file. I can even come here, and this cannot retake because of this absolute pin. So I'm not trying to overcomplicate things, but these are the things at 1400 you should start thinking about these types of things okay now i want to show you something the reason why the bar and i when i play i like to go for the triple crown so i don't use any of these aids or anything but um i wanted to show you something that um i'm going to go here and if you take this is a mistake it looks like a free bishop this this is the point to this video it looks like a free bishop but hang on because uh you see i went there and uh oh interesting what is that Hmm. Okay. Um, because it took it, but it was not a free bishop because of this fork. Okay. And so, and then now I got a major piece. I took a minor piece and captured a major piece. So that's kind of that next level of, you know, thinking beyond just exchanging, exchanging, exchanging. So, okay. So I'm going to ignore this for now because I can get a free bishop and if this pawn wants to take this, I'll, you know, um, and that's what we're going to see here. Now, a lot of times when I played even just three years ago, I would have reacted and just take this. But it's really not, I don't see where it's hurting me. I know it's scary having a pawn down in your neck of the woods, but it's okay at this situation for me just to ignore it for now. And instead, I'm going to pick up this knight. Okay, and I'll show you where I um, I almost thought about just... Um, let's go back and look at this. I almost thought about doing this, but then it's take, take. And that's fine. And maybe I should have. It's going to work out the same because then I'm still going to pick up this pawn. Um, I don't know. There's more than one right way to do something a lot of times, you know, even in chess. Uh, the computer knows better than I do. It'll say maybe I should have not done that or whatever. But um, So here I'm finally getting my 
bishop in the game, you want to get your pieces in the game and working together. One piece by itself, even the queen, can't accomplish much. So I've got these two pieces working together. My knight's just kind of hanging out in danger zone, I confess. But I want to work this. Okay. And the computer at 1400 saw that, and I figured it would. But um, So we're going to do a little exchanging here. Okay. I really expected this take, but... That's okay. So now I do have to deal with this pawn. <laughs> and I did. And I got so uh, my rook underneath it. And I want to show you something about um, uh, promoting too here in just a second. So now I would love to come out here. Oops. Um, come out here. Okay. And own this open file. Um, it's the only open file in the game. But before I just do that, let's deal with this problem first and just if you're a little new to chess just by the way this would be a closed file because there's two pawns on it my opponent's pawn and my pawn so that's a closed file this is an open file because there's no pawns on it this is a semi-open file okay semi-open okay so anyway let's move on and now that i've dealt with that now i can get my uh, rook in or uh, my uh, rook in the game. Sorry. Um, one thing that I want to be aware of is if I'm always looking at my weaknesses and my opponent's strengths and vice versa. So my opponent, this I need to be careful of this because two pawns advancing is difficult to stop, even with a rook. So this is the greatest strength that my opponent has right here. And that's what I'm most concerned about. And here in a little bit, you'll see me swing over to this side and bring some resources over to this side to deal with that problem before it becomes a serious threat. Okay. Now, this knight is protected. And one thing, you know, I, Gary Kasparov said at one time that later in his career, he came to realize that all things being equal, sometimes a bishop is worth 3.2 instead of just three. So your minor pieces are worth three points, your major, uh, your rooks are worth five, and your queen is worth uh, nine. So two rooks is worth 10. So you know two rooks is stronger than a queen. Okay, this is just to help you quickly calculate is, is all that that number system is. But at the end game, right now in this situation, I'd rather have the knight than the bishop because it's a dark squared bishop and all I have to do is tell myself to stay off the dark squares and protect my forces, and it can never get me. Anyway, so, <coughs> excuse me, I am allergic to my own bullcrap, folks. All right, so, let's uh, lay down some heat and try to promote, and I want to talk about promotion here in just a second. So, the idea is when you promote a pawn, you want your major piece under your pawn, under not over. Now, if you're promoting a pawn with the aid of a king, you want your king on top of your pawn. Okay, so that will help in many situations. I thought about this. Now, let's go back to this situation. I thought about staying over here. But I, like I said earlier, I need to start dealing with this. And so here is another fork, and I can at least get a free pawn. Is it a free pawn? Let's check. Yes. Okay. So... All right, so now it's nothing but isolated pawns. And I don't want to swing over to this side, but like I said earlier, it's my biggest threat. And this pawn here is actually, I'm keeping this pawn here, okay? I have no intentions of taking this pawn because it is troublesome for my opponent, and you'll see here in just a minute. So I am going to go ahead and protect this and still own this open file. Um, and I got to start getting my knight in and, uh, I, what I really need to do is promote and I'm, you know, I'm just going to promote this. And here's the problem. My opponent needs to come to this square and it can't because of its own piece. Its own piece is playing to my advantage. And so, you know, I, I'll just keep it there. Now, again, knee jerk reaction might be to take that and that's probably fine, but don't run out of time. By time, I mean tempo, not clock time. So I would rather advance this pawn than deal with this situation because this situation 
as this pawn to deal with it. That's this, this pawn's job is to deal with that situation, this situation. Okay, so it's fine. I'm just going to leave it and not waste the time, tempo, and I'm just going to keep this pawn going. Okay, now I have to deal with it, right? You see that? Yeah. Now I'm, my hand is being forced. I have to deal with that because I don't want this to happen. I know I have this here, but you know what? Let's, let's deal with that. Okay, so he's going to, my opponent's going to drive themselves crazy trying to mop up this mess over here, and that's fine, but... So, um, let's get the queen over here in the game. All right, I'm trying to close this out. Now, I have to be careful. At this point, my opponent's looking to do a draw. So, make sure there's... And this pawn can't move. So, make sure there's places for my opponent to go. With a bishop, it's going to be hard for them to get a draw. Because more than likely, there's going to be a place to go. Okay. And there it is. So... Uh, I hope that helps. The biggest takeaway is um, don't just play chess like checkers where you just exchange pieces back and forth. Always be looking for these uh, positional advantage. If you see an open file, try to get a major piece in, in that open file, especially this game where there was only one open file for the longest time. Um, be the one to own it. It makes all the difference in the world. It'll lay the foundation for future ideas. Um, that's the big thing is it lays the foundation for future ideas. So get in this good position. I uh, hope this helps. A lot of fun. Thanks for watching. I like playing the robots because you can take your time and just think about things. And as always, have a great day.